In this video, I'm going through a backgammon tournament survey I did online. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. Put in the comments what you'd like to see in future videos and also tell me what you'd like to see uh, in tournaments. That's the whole idea. The idea was uh, I did a survey online. So it was an informal survey to see what people liked about certain tournaments and what people didn't like. What are the reasons why they would go to one tournament over another? And that would help the tournament organizers uh, adjust and uh, make it better for the players to attend. So uh, this is the feedback that I received. Uh, I just made a list. So the first on the list is affordability, how much it's going to cost them to go there. Um, if they've never been there, some people would like to go. Prize money was a concern. They wanted more prize money. Uh, I think that's always a challenge with the uh, lack of sponsorships and costs of other things, but that was a something people mentioned. A nice location, people always like to be in a nice hotel, um, the venue, where it is, uh, and you know, again, the nice location, uh, what kind of room uh, the event is gonna be in, the hotel rooms and so forth. Uh, the tournament director, um, specifically people mentioned uh, they want a tournament director who's not playing while directing. That's usually the case for most of the large tournaments. Uh, friendly staff, of course, everyone likes friendly staff. Most of the tournaments I've been to, all the staff are very friendly. Uh, how well the tournament is run? Is it run on time? Are there delays? Um, all sorts of things. And who else will be there? A lot of people like to go see, you know, certain people that they like to watch or if they seen them win tournaments or if they read their books, uh, people like like that. Uh, next thing on the list is cost of travel, lodging, food. You know, it is expensive to travel long distances and stay at hotels for multiple nights. Um, so that's a concern. Uh, tournament fees, whether there's a registration fee or other fees. Unfortunately, nowadays, because of a variety of issues, uh, people have to incur fees in order to cover the costs of the tournaments. Streaming videos, that's always fun. A lot of tournaments do streaming videos so people can watch online, they can watch later, they can watch live, uh, all sorts of things. One person mentioned um, he doesn't want it on a Friday or Saturday, so maybe if there's a different event on a Sunday or a different event on a Thursday, that would be good. Uh, another thing people mentioned is BMAB, the Backgammon Masters Awarding Body, or UBC, Ultimate Backgammon Championship. Those events are where you get basically ra rated for your PR, and that goes towards a ranking system. Uh, so that's always nice. I played in one recently. That was fun. Distance from home. Obviously, if it's a short distance from home, it's going to be a lot easier for you to travel there. If it's a long distance, um, there's got to be a lot to look forward to to be able to go there. Uh, more players in attendance. Of course, uh, the bigger the field, the better it is, the more fun there is, the bigger the prize money, all sorts of reasons. Uh, clocks. Uh, that's also something a lot of people like. Clocks just make everything run more quickly and more on time. Uh, we play in our local tournaments without clocks, and sometimes there are certain players that just take forever, and it drags the tournament on, and it just takes way too long. Uh, but when you have clocks, people just play faster, everything runs on time, and everything runs more smoothly. Another thing people said is they like things to do outside of the tournaments, uh, like restaurants, attractions, shops, if they bring their spouse, if they want to go to dinner somewhere. They like to have nice restaurants and things to do outside of the tournament because you're not going to be playing 24 hours a day. Um, and especially if you're going to a city where you've never been to, you may want to do some sightseeing and things like that. Uh, it's nice to have some things that are nearby the location of the tournament. Uh, next is a hotel near the airport. So if it's close to the airport, um, it's, of course, easier to get there after you your flight. Uh, however, nowadays with uh, transportation, uh, with Uber, Lyft, taxis, it's become very easy. So that's not as big of a concern for a lot of people. 
ease of travel to location and transportation, whether they can get a direct flight there or whether they have to go to one city and then take a second flight or perhaps uh, drive or take a train uh, another hour or two hours to get to the location. Um, next is the prestige of the tournament. Certainly some of the tournaments have more prestige than others and people like that. Uh, the weather. So people like warm weather. They don't like to go in places where they're cold weather uh, for the most part, although some people do like cold weather. Uh, but if it's nice outside, people just like that. Uh, the format was something people mentioned, whether you're able to play and you're able to continue playing. For example, Swiss formats, you just keep playing every round and you play multiple rounds. Um, and sometimes it is like that, sometimes it's not like that. So people want to get their money's worth. That makes sense. Side events, what kinds of side events are there? So there's usually a main tournament, uh, and sometimes there are jackpots, there are other sorts of things. Uh, uh, oftentimes when there are multiple tournaments going on at the same time, such as a main tournament and then some blitzes you want to play in, uh, sometimes that just gets in the way and you can't play in the other one or you can't play in one and your opponent may be playing in a different one and that just affects the whole schedule. If you have to wait on one of your matches, then the other one gets delayed and vice versa. So um, that was a concern people had. Single day events. A lot of the people uh, live here, actually here where I live in Los Angeles, a lot of the local players do not come to the large tournaments that are held twice a year because they have to be there for multiple days and it's hard for them to get away from work or family or other commitments for multiple days. So if there's a single tournament that starts and ends on a single day, they told me they would be more likely to come. Not a tournament that starts on a Friday and then the finals is on a Sunday. That's not a single day event. A single day event is one that starts on the same day that it ends. I play in the BMAB day uh, event recently, and that was all on Wednesday. So I was able to take Wednesday off and go back to work on Thursday. And there were multiple other people that did that. Um, scheduling was another issue people had, whether you have to wake up really early or whether you have to play really late. And that brings in all the other uh, things into play, whether there's clocks, the uh, tournament directors, whether they run things smoothly. Um, if you have your things together, um, you can schedule everything right so that people don't have issues. Uh, next on the list, uh, some people like trophy presentations. I know that's more popular in Europe than the United States, uh, but some people like that. Having beverages and snacks that's always nice. Have some water, have some coffee. Uh, I know it can be an expense, uh, but at least it's nice to have something there so you don't have to leave the room. Friendly to first timers. So that's that's always something nice. That way you get more people coming to the tournament. You can have a tournament, for example, for beginners. Doesn't have to be a complicated tournament. Can be just one point matches. Beginners are not familiar with the cube. So why not just play a one point match without a cube? And that's only for the beginners. And that'll be quick. It won't take forever. You can do all of that in a single day. You can have lectures specifically for the first timers. There's all sorts of things. Um, ease of reading draw sheets. Nowadays, a lot of things are done electronically. Having it on your phone is very convenient. Some people are not familiar with the technology, but it's not hard to do it. I saw recently there was a tournament in Turkey. Everything was on your phone. You report your match. You see your draw. It'll text you where your next match is, what table you're at. That just makes things easier. Next on the list is recommendations from others. So everybody knows friends or other people that play backgammon and they ask them what tournaments should I go to uh, and they say go to this tournament or go to that tournament for this reason or that reason and friends recommendations are important um, opportunity to play a lot so people want to get their money's worth they want to be able to play multiple rounds but they don't want to be knocked out and then be out of it for the rest of the weekend um, having multiple rounds or different formats such as constellations or Swiss formats are really good because you keep playing or there some tournaments have 
uh, other tournaments that start when people get knocked out. So other blitzes, jackpots, and you're not permitted to be in those tournaments uh, if unless you're out of the main tournament. Uh, recording and transcription services. A lot of the people nowadays record their match. They videotape it. Some of them are live streams. Some of them people just record their own matches so they can analyze it and study when they get home. That's important. People can bring their own uh, equipment or they can have some provided from the tournament. Uh, seminar. A lot of the a lot of the tournaments have seminars and uh, people like certain topics that are obviously related to backgammon, learning strategies, all sorts of things. Um, other other types of seminars on topics that are not directly related to things like strategy and learning and improving your game. Uh, we're not at the top of the list for people. Um, speed gammon was another uh, side event that people liked. It just moves things along. It's a faster game. You're not sitting there thinking and waiting forever to someone for someone to make a play. It's more enjoyable to play. It's more enjoyable to watch. Um, and people like that. Next on the list was having multiple divisions. So a lot of the tournaments already have this. Usually there's an open or a championship division, and then there's some sort of an intermediate or perhaps advanced division, and then there's a novice or beginner's division. Um, so that's commonly seen in much of the big tournaments. Uh, the entry fees, uh, some people like lower entry fees. I spoke with the tournament director who says he has tiered entry fees. So you can enter for a certain amount, and you can also enter for an additional amount as a side pool. So only the people that are in the side pool would be eligible to win that. Uh, but if you're only in the main pool, you'd be eligible to win that. So the winner of the tournament wins the main pool. And the person who goes the farthest out of those in the side pool wins the side pool. So this, these are tiered level entries for people that want a bigger entry fee and bigger prize money or some that just want to have a minimal entry fee and uh, they just want to play. Uh, and then timing was the last thing, just has to do with the dates of the tournament, whether they can fit it in their schedule, whether it's just a few days or whether it's many days, all those things come into play. And then in summary, I, I grouped them into different types of issues. The first one was travel related issues that includes distance from home, ease of travel to the destination and a hotel near the airport. The second one was venue related. They like to have a nice venue, a nice city, amenities, things to do while not playing such as restaurants, shops, uh, unique locations. So location where people have never been or people that uh, a place where people have always wanted to go but never had a chance and having a tournament there is kind of a nice excuse to visit those places. The weather is the other thing, whether it's hot, cold. Of course, people don't want to be freezing when they're going there. They don't want to be too hot. They want it to be comfortable. Um, some things can be controlled. Some things cannot be controlled. It really depends on the city. Uh, the next one is event related. So the different types of events, whether there's speed gammon, BMAB, all sorts of other things, different divisions, as I mentioned, novice, advanced, open, side events like jackpots, single day events that start and end on the same day and whether clocks are required. Some people specifically said they won't enter a tournament where there are no clocks required. Um, and that's fair because they want the tournament to run smoothly and begin and end uh, at an appropriate time. And the next group was cost related issues, which has to do with travel costs, lodging costs, entry fees, and prize money. Um, it's not it's not inexpensive to travel long distances to get to these tournaments, so um, it has to be within people's budgets. Uh, next group is organizational. So people want an experienced tournament director, uh, someone who knows what they're doing, how to run the tournament, friendly and welcoming staff, and staff that are friendly to first timers. That's that's always very important. That way we get more people playing uh, in the tournaments and more people interested in the game. Next is format related issues, not starting too early and not playing late. Of course, people don't like that, especially if they're coming from different time zones. 
uh, opportunity to play many matches, such as the Swiss format, and ease of reading the draw sheets, such as the newer electronic versions where you could just see on the phone rather than having to go look on a handwritten sheet where the handwriting may not be uh, as legible. And finally, the ancillary features, which are the seminars, Calcutta auction, streaming video, and refreshments available. So that was the results of the Backgammon Tournament Survey. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and put in the comments what you think you'd like to hear, uh, you'd like to have at a tournament so that we can all learn and improve. And let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.